Okay, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 12. Now, chapter 40 correlates with the 40th book of the Bible, Matthew, and we saw that division break between the Old Testament and the Gospels. Now, remember, the Gospels are not the New Testament yet. So we pick up verse 12, where we left off last night, and we're going to see a remarkable reflection of God and man. How the great ability God is, and how the mere, well, what do I say, mere nothing that man is, because you realize without God, there is no man. Without man, God is God. And the fact is, whether you believe in God or you don't believe in God, everything we are and is, is because of God. Now, you can have scientific belief, you can have religious belief, you can have an atheist belief, but it all comes down to God. And we'll go through this and I said, many, many, many years of street ministry, dealing with people one-on-one -on -one and, and, and witnessing and teaching the Bible and, and Sunday school and prison. And I'll show you what this what it does. Verse 12. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? This would be God. And this is where people probably get, you know, he's got the whole world in his hands. And yet the whole entire universe is water. And let me tell you, when they send astronauts, nautical, in a space ship, that if you were to go bouncing up and down on the moon, you need an oxygen supply. So with all the waters on the planet Earth, the seas, the oceans, rivers, ponds, and the waters are in outer space. You know, we're searching Mars for water. And that. Of course you're going to find water. The whole solar system is water. Look at Genesis chapter 1. And, we're not, and this could be a great detailed study, and we're not going to make it a great deal. But let's look at Genesis 1. <clears throat> let's see what the Bible has to say about it. Verse 2, and the earth was without form, and void as darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Holy Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. That's the universe. So, okay. How much water is there? And yet, how many stars are there when the Bible tells us that God knows how many stars and calls them by name? And knows every name on the human from Adam. And then when man goes into hell, he loses his name. And meet out heaven with a span. Who's measured the heavens? It takes you a very long time just to get to Mars. Pluto, if he's a planet or not a planet. And just our solar system alone is, I'm going to say Pluto, whether it's a planet or not. When I grew up as a boy, it was a planet. Man can't survive to go out to Pluto. And comprehend the dust of the earth. Do you really comprehend it? What is the dust of the earth? Do you realize that the dust grows every day? Oh, we got the dust measured. No, you don't, because dust also includes skin, hair, flakes, all human beings. I mean, when you go around and dust in your house, you're dusting yours and your family's uh, skin. And if you got a dog, cat, bird, dust growing. <laughs> and yet God knows. 
So, and we get people, oh, I'm good. Are you good enough to know what everything is? And, you know, gravity and H2O and the periodic game. What if we get to heaven, God says, hey, you had it all wrong. I'm not saying, what, what if we? And weigh the mountains in scales. Oh, come on. I bet you God has. And the hills and the balance. You know what scales and balance are? How, how much does that Mount Everest weigh? I mean, you talk about the, these television game shows and contestant shows. Let's put God as a contestant and everybody will lose. Who has directed the Spirit, capital S? That's the Holy Spirit of God, the Lord. Have you ever told the Holy Spirit? That, are you able to tell the Holy Spirit? Do you guide the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit prays for Christians with an utterance that we can't even... And being his counselor has taught him. Are you God's counselor? Have you taught? And we're going to look at a lot of thoughts. Have you and God sat down and you told God something? Have you taught God something God never knew? I know, you know, we all get that thing. No, no, not me. We all get, you know, our, sometimes our prayer life that we have a better idea than God. And reality, we don't. With whom took he counsel? Okay. That's God. When God created heaven, who did he say? All right, we're going to have a board meeting. Everyone sit down and, and there's your coffee and all that. Uh, first agenda for today, folks. I'm going to make something called a fish. Look, look on the board. Look at your PowerPoint. That's what I'm going to design. Do you think I should have fish in the water? Or do you think I have fish in the sky? What do you think I should do? A bird in the sky? Oh, okay. Put the fish in the water and make a bird. Oh, okay. Now, in the Baptist church, all, all in favor of putting the fish in the water and the birds in the sky, raise your hand. Okay. Uh, you want to take down the notes of the... God didn't do that. God, and it's a place, who could tell God his mistakes if he made any? In the beginning, God, we saw the Holy Spirit, and if you do the study, you'll see that the word that God spoke is the Lord Jesus Christ. You know that God, Jesus Christ, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were before the angels? God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ were before Lucifer. Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, God, were before the cherubim. And then the seraphim. Now, you would think that somebody would come up and say, Well, wait a minute, God, hold on. What? You know, you're not being Lucifer you're going to make? <laughs> God, yep, I know what's going to happen. Well, God, if you put that man and that woman in the garden and you put that, I know what's going to happen. I'm at the point in my Christian life right now, and the Bible says, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Uh, we have an almighty, and we do have, we have an all-powerful, mighty God. And I, I, I'm in the point in my Christian life with, with things that have happened, things God knew about Lucifer. God knew about Satan. God knew about the serpent. God knew about the tree. I know about free will, yet he allowed it all to happen. And people say, you know, if God would have made the woman first, she would have told him how. To... No, shut up with your stupid jokes. No one would have told God anything. You know, we try, we're perverting God to try to get a laugh. I'm coming on 34 years of salvation, and the, these jokes and all that, all they do is pervert the word of God. God got nobody's 
opinion, nobody's spreadsheet on what to do, what he does. Again, how wonderful and mighty God is and how <clears throat> is man. You know, the Bible says if God were to take his spirit out of our nostrils, we die. Well, we know CPR. We, we, we get the power. If God says you're dead, you're dead. It's that plain and simple. Verse 14. Who instructed him? Oh, I know plenty of people who like to instruct God. But who instructed him? There are scholars and, and educated and they're the, the fool. They will tell God what to do. No. <clears throat> and taught, there's that word again, him the path of judgment. It's amazing. Again, like I said, public ministry, let me look at what I know. Somebody will come up to me, judge not least you be judge. Finish the verse. You know what I believe the great white zone judgment? I believe God's going to allow people to walk up to him, judge not least you be judge. And he's, I think God's going to let you say whatever you have to say. That's what they do in courtrooms. And then God's going to lay it on the facts and God's going to lay it down on you. I don't think you should send people into hell. Well, what gives you the right to send people to hell? The fact is, I send people go out there. I, 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 they have these little things called gospel tracts and they try everything they can to try to get you to not go to hell. Well, you know, you have the, all this, this, this snow and, the, and electricity has failed and people are freezing to death. Well, you won't listen to me. So who's going to teach God judgment? And taught him knowledge. <laughs> you don't think God knows? There's only one thing that God doesn't know. God doesn't know how to sin. The world would love to teach God to sin. Because then they would have a God just like them. And show to him, God, the way of understanding. Well, God, let me, let me show you the knowledge, wisdom. And, and listen, the scholar, Bible scholars try to do that. Bible perverters who, <clears throat> who revise Bibles, they're trying to, God, we know better. God has given us a, a perfect English Bible, the King James Bible. But in the Greek, you know what you're saying? You're saying before you congregate, how smart I am. And God, I know better. You put it in English, but I know better the Greek. And how many people out there in that congregation are going to go through a Greek? Don't even know Greek. Probably some could not take a blank map of the world and point their finger in the general area where Greece was. And that's all men to say, I'm smarter than you. I go to I go to Webster's 1828 dictionary. Anybody knows how to look up a dictionary. Behold the nation. Now watch this. The nations plural are a drop in a bucket. What's that? Get yourself a bucket. Any bucket. Now take yourself a, a medicine dropper. Which I have right here. A little medicine dropper. Make a little drop. Alright. That's it. I don't know if you saw that. Put that little drop in a bucket. Now I don't know how many. Uh, 10 gallons. Those 10 gallons. I don't know how many drops would make a 10-gallon bucket. I got a 20-gallon fish tank over there. I don't know how many drops would make 20 gallons. But the Bible says the nations are as a drop in a bucket. America, we're number one. America, we're great. Yeah, God says you're just a drop. You realize if you take all the nations in the world... I don't know, 300, 400, 500, maybe 1,000. What would you take a drop? Every nation in the world. A drop in a bucket. 
how much liquid would you have in that bucket when you're done? You won't. It won't even be filled. And America, she boasts on how great she is. You're just a drop in all the other drops. You've got people in you just like people in Africa, people in Europe, people in Asia. you got people that need food, water, and drink just like everybody else. And there are some places in the world they don't need the cell phone. There are some people in the world they don't have four walls in, in, a, in a ceiling and a floor. Some people got four walls and they don't even have, they have a dirt floor. Some people in the world drop in a bucket. They're healthier and better because they walk to their place of business. And then their burden nations have been totally wiped out. Babylon. Assyria. They're gone. God, they're gone. All right. What's God? Is he ever gone? He's never going. And yet those nations are dropping a bucket without God. They wouldn't even be nations. And are counted as small dust of a balance. Get some. You couldn't even weigh the dust. <coughs> Verse 12. And, and, and a dust in a balance. Let's say God, all right, you know what? That cup is full. Bye, Sodom. Bye, Gomorrah. God sent matchsticks to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Excuse me, me match. Sulfur. Sulfur is what's on your matchstick. With hail. I don't think God broke a sweat. I don't think God extended much of his energy to have the Medes and Persians come under the walls of Babylon and destroy Babylon overnight. I don't think America presses, impresses God. Maybe at one time she did, sending missionaries out and, and, and great revival and preaching and all that. I don't think that today. Behold, he, God, taketh up the aisles as a very little thing. All the aisles. You know, people, some of the places, islands, it's their vacation resort. It's their cruise. And God says, that's a little thing. Oh, one of these years, we're going to go to the Bahamas, and we're going to, we're going to visit one of the islands, Hawaii, we're going to go to the island of Japan, and and we're going to save money. We're going to, and God says, it's just a what? A little thing. Australia. It's a big island. God says, that's just a little thing. What is? Take Australia. It's, a, it's an island. Okay. What is Australia as far as land mass compared to Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. And the sun. And the stars. What is that landmass compared? And there are other planets in, out there. And yet God knows them all by name. God knows everything. And when you get this Hubble telescope and, you, and they send pictures back and just the extreme beauty of what's out there that man will never see, would never have seen if it wasn't for a Hubble. Who sees that? God. All these fishes they find at the bottom of the ocean. Who's going to see that, God? They say they, they find these fishes. They're, they're beautiful. They're just stream beautiful colors. And in the environment they are, they have no protection. They're not camouflaged. And other fish, <laughs> wow, there's my dinner. What's, the guy says, I like that fish. I like that color. And that fish needs to eat. Understand that. In Lebanon. 
Lebanon back then, great big, is not sufficient to burn. <laughs> I mean, don't you think, people, yeah, we're Lebanon, yeah, don't you like to look up? Don't you? People, people oh, we're America, yeah. And I can show you videos of people in China having a box smuggled in into China, opened up in the underground church, and they, they find its Bibles, and they're loving, kissing, and hugging those Bibles like it was their wife or husband. And I can show you Bibles in America where it's skimmed across the road. It's not even brought. It's amazing how many people I see in church, and they pick up the pew Bible. Oh, well, not be a pew Bible. Oh, it'd be your Bible. I want them people, and I, I, I don't know where I got this. You don't have to believe this. Not you're going to go to hell, but I believe God's going to take us in heaven with our own Bibles eventually. Heaven and earth will pass away. But imagine if, uh, like I said, this is oddball. But what, you know, I got a couple. Of, let's end up in heaven with 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 this King James Bible, my Bible, with all my notes and tears and blood and. Imagine you getting to heaven find your Bible hasn't even been taken out of the box or out, of the, out of the plastic wrapper. We'll be judged for everything. Will the Bible be open to minor prophets to say, hey, Stiley read the minor prophets? Is your D, I mean, if something happened to you, and the only thing that w was ever left behind of you was Zephaniah. Forever, only Zephaniah. There's Zephaniah. That's a book in the Bible. Could the cops find enough DNA to, to get information on you? Nor the beast thereof sufficient for burnt offering. It, all the animals in Lebanon, God says, night. Not enough. Now, one of God used the word Lebanon. Goes, We're Lebanon. Look who we are. And yet, there's only one nation above all nations of, in the eyes of God. It's not Lebanon. It's not America. It's the people of Israel. They're the ones that have, they have a right to brag. And their bragging has produced proudness and produced pride that gets angered with God. All nations before him as nothing. All right, what's the pride of America? I know England is a failed nation now, but no nation has done of God what England has done. There was a time that said that <clears throat> the sun never set upon the English Empire. Why? Because she sent out missionaries all over the world in the darkest co continents. You say Africa. I'm talking about all the darkness in the world. England sent out the Geneva Bible. England sent out the King James Bible for people to know. America hasn't done that. Oh, you know, we sent missionaries. You sent missionaries that roads that had already been plowed. Livingston said and replied that, you know, there are people here, they want to come. What paths have you made in Africa? It's like, don't come. You got to make your paths. America has trotted on paths that have already been trod, but never started new paths. And now she's backing away from missionaries. She's turned away. Listen, um, I think it was 1881, uh, something that turned them, that turned England away. I'm thinking RSV, but I may be. But think about all the modern Bibles that come out of America. My jury that lists are American Bibles. Even one of them, American Standard Version. That's what that's what tanked America. American Standard Version, I think, is the RSV that tanked England. The RSV, if it's the RSV, 1881, that's what started the Laodicean church age. 
That's what closed the Philadelphia Open Church. And these nations, oh, look who we are. You know, the Olympics in America is how praying. You know what the angels rejoice in, the Bible says? The angels rejoice in a man that got saved. A new name written down in glory. You know what America does? She sends out missionaries to say this prayer, to say this prayer. And maybe when they say this prayer, maybe the angels are not rejoicing because maybe it's not a true salvation. Now, I don't know. Do you know what America and her religions are? Seventh-day Adventists? The Mormons? The Jehovah Witnesses? Mary Baker Eddy? Look at the foundation of the religious of America, and you think God would be pleased? America is following the ways of Babylon. Babylon's going. America is following the ways of Egypt. Egypt's the type of world. Get out of her. Egypt following the ways of Sodom and Gomorrah. God destroyed them. All the nations before him are nothing. They are counted to him less than nothing vanity. You say, well, what about Israel? What would Israel be without God? Where is Israel now in Isaiah and Jeremiah, man? They're not worshiping God. They got the queen of heaven. They got all the God. And in the eyes of God, that's vanity. The only way that nation of Israel will be a purest great nation above all the nations as they are now is when God gives them a new heart, takes out the stony heart, and God will, will take away their, their iniquity and their sins and cleanse them and make them holy, pure, for eternity. Then they'll be the nation of nations. You know, as the Bible says there'll be nations in the millennium, sheep nations. That's the name given, sheep nation. But you can find Israel going in millennium. You know, the Bible says that Israel's going into eternal life, the church is going into eternal life, and there'll be nations in the eternal life. What's the name of those nations? We're not, we're not even told. And it won't be America. You won't find the stars and stripes hanging over the, the walls of, of New Jerusalem. You're not going to find a president. You're not going to find Republicans, Democrats. You're not going to find the queens. I'm not patriotic at all. I don't support a country. I was talking today to a soldier. I don't support a nation that, that has her vet, her vets, her military vets, living on the streets, and you got people never worked a day in their life getting pregnant so they can get more government money. I say boot those people out, out of housing and put the, put the vets in the housing. Yeah, that, that's not going to go off too popular, but... Verse 18. And this is a weird, 18 to 21 is a weird thing in here. To whom then will you liken God? And what likeness will you compare unto him? Okay. I don't know if we're going to finish this chapter. I'll tell you what likeness they have. An Italian. The pictures you find in your Bible, the religious Bible, that you see a picture of Jesus, that's in Italian. A preacher today mentioned Hollywood movies of the Bible. Really? Charlton Heston as Moses? Really? You don't know your Bible. Moses was not Charlton Heston. Moses was not an American. They made movies about Jesus. He wasn't an American. Who are you going to liken to God? What do you do with a nation as India? They've got tons and quadruples amounts of gods. You see, have you looked up images, and we're going to look in the more images and idols, just look at pictures on, 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 on uh, Google and all that to see all the weird, you know, they got antlers, they got eagle's head, they got moose's head, they got, to them, that's a God. My God's a spirit, you can't see my God. 
Verse 19, the workman melted a graven image, and the goldsmith spreads it over with gold and casts its silver chain. Some people think God is gold. He's a spirit. You know why gold is silver? Because they value that. You can buy things with it. He that's so empress, and you look up here, empress is to be made poor. Poor. To make poor, to reduce the poverty. You're making a god, but you're poor. Wow. That he has no oblation chosen. He has no offering to God, but he's going to make a God. He's going to go out and says, get a tree. God made the tree. He can't buy the tree. But he's going to go out and get a piece of a tree and he's going to turn it to a God. That's the creation being the cre being the creator. That's Romans chapter 1. So he says, no ablation, choosing the tree that will not rot. Uh, evergreen. <laughs> Silver chains, would that be tinsel? But it's not a Christmas. Why are you defending one sin? That, that's what came. Christmas tree. Yeah, aha. Uh -huh. He seeketh unto him a cunning workman, that means expert, to prepare a graven image that shall not be moved. That's Jeremiah 10. We pass by when we go to church, and, and they, there, there's, there's a statue, but they got all kinds of statues and, and pan and. and, and Bird fountains and eagles and all kinds. Man's got to move it. I come out of Catholic Church, there's statue. What kind of God is it that man has to move his God? Where the God of the statue doesn't move the man. What kind of God do you have to dust God? Catholics get special great credit. Listen, I grew up as a cat. You got Mary in the half show out in your front lawn, and you got to go out there and clean her and all that. She can't take her own bath. That's, a, that's your God, though. I, I, forget, I forget how Paul, what does he put? Dumb idols? Now, he's saying can't talk. <laughs> dumb idols. But they're also dumb as dough. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? That's the job of the preacher. That's the job of going out preaching the gospel. People don't like it like a, a, a public evangelist. Whatever how the public. Whatever you do publicly to proclaim Jesus, they don't like it. But they the Bible says, have they known? Yeah, you've been told. You just don't want to listen. <coughs> That's your fault, not mine. Have they understood from the foundation of the earth? I don't understand a lot, most, plenty. My God does. Imagine a guy who, who has to pull his pants down to go potty going to tell me how things work and how things run. And he thinks he's got more sense than God. And he's going to get to say, we come from monkeys. And in the beginning was the Big Bang. Well, who was there? Nobody. What's your evidence? Rocks. Were the rocks there when the Big Bang? Well, no. That's like the Bible scholars. We know much better than God. <laughs> it is he, God, now watch this, that sitteth on the circle of the earth. You know how long it took people to realize the earth was a circle? And yet, B.C. 712, Isaiah said, circle. Job says the earth hangeth on nothing. 
Man didn't know that. I mean, there, 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 are, there are religions out there the earth is carried on the turtle. There are people that believe, still believe today that the earth is flat. You know what God matches verse 22? You ready? He that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. Who sits upon the circle of the earth as a God? Santa Claus. He's up at the North Pole. That's not God. But to the world, they pray to him. They be good for him. They write him letters. And the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers. You know, you know what you are to God? You're a grasshopper. You know what God, you know what God's prophet came in, in chapter 50? Or 40, excuse me. You know what you know what prophet showed up in the 40th book of the Bible? He came eating grasshoppers. You know what destroyed Egypt? Grasshoppers. Is it Joel that speaks about the grasshoppers? Then the poverty worms and then the canker worms? And stretches out the heavens as a curtain. The roar the roar beyond roar borealis. The northern lights is found in Isaiah. Now, who know that besides the people that were in Alaska before it was named Alaska? And spreads them out as a tent to dwell in. And they say those lights just look like a tent. Curtain. Which is also the model of the tabernacle built by Moses. That bringeth the princes to nothing. I thought we voted. Oh, they stole the vote. Donald Trump lost the presidency because they stole the vote. No, it's God that, no, I don't want him president. But we voted. I, mean, I don't care what you voted. God has showed, even though you go to the polls and you vote, God said, hey, I'll just mess with those numbers. I sit back and laugh. Oh, it was stolen. Christians saying the, sto the vote was stolen. <laughs> I'm saying, no, God did it. Now, I would hate to be a Christian and go before the judgment seat of Christ. I right, step up. Now, why did you call me a thief? I didn't call you a thief. Did you say the voting was stolen? Yeah, they stole the vote. Uh, I did it. <gasps> yeah, I know he was numbered among the thieves on Calvary's cross, but you just called him a thief. <gasps> Get out of politics. Preach the gospel. He maketh judges... Of the earth vanity. You know how many judges God's going to judge in the end? Judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment? All of them. And that clues the people that come up to me, judge not least to be judged. Wait a minute, you're judging me. Duh! They get mad when you tell them that. Judge not least to be judged. Well, why aren't you judging me? The judges of the earth. All right, right? Here's one. You're driving down the road. There's a light up ahead. It turns red. Well, I got to stop. You know what you're doing? You're judging. God's going to judge you. We're judging. And those people today, we had today a guy. That guy did not judge a red light properly. God's going to say, hey, you judged it wrong. I'm going to find it fault with you. Every time you run through a red light and you say, well, I don't mean stop. God's going to judge you because you judge wrong. What do you think God's going to judge you as a husband when it comes to your wife? What do you think God's going to judge you as a wife to your husband? What about parents to a children? No, I've gotten pregnant. It's going to ruin my life, so I'll just kill the baby. You're a judge. You are a judge of life to say, I'll take that life from my womb. You're going to stand before God. Oh, what? Oh, who does he think he is? I'm not going to make him. Wife, I'm not going to make him sandwiches. Well, hey, you're being a judge right now. God will judge you. I don't know why I have to sit here and do this math. This math is stupid. All right, you're being a judge. God will judge you. Yay! <laughs> they shall not be planted. Yay, they shall not be sown like in the plant. Yay, their stock. 
That's what comes out of the ground. Shall not take root in the earth. This is man, and this is... You're not staying on the earth forever. You're going to die, and normally we're going to bury you in the ground. Your body's coming out of the grave. Whether you go to, before Jesus Christ saved, or you go off of the great white throne, judge, you're, come, you're not, your body in the grave, we got a couple cemeteries around it. Those cemeteries will be empty one day. And the earth and all that's going to go bye-bye, fervent heat. He shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither. Now this would be unsaved people. And the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. Stubble is the, is the junk. To whom then will you liken me? Or shall I be equal, save the Holy One? Now go back to verse number 18. To whom then will you liken God? And what likeness will you compare it to him and then a graven image? You know, that, that Christmas tree likens to God. What's on top of that Christmas tree? Isn't there a star or an angel? Well, what's on top in God's heaven? Stars and angels? And then gold and silver and colorful great things as New Jerusalem? I'll get off that. But over here, now God is speaking. To whom will you liken me? Or shall I be equal? He says, what likeness will you compare to me? Who are you going to make equal to me save the Holy One? That is you standing before God. Anybody who's made a God, whatever that God is, if it's not God, you're going to stand before God, save the law. You're going to have, okay. Was that preacher really that good, better than my son? What do you mean, Lord? Oh, we got the greatest preacher. So tell me how long you've been how long you've been in heaven? Well, we've been in heaven since the rapture, Father. You like it? Yeah. Well, this is just the beginning. Wait till you see the new Jerusalem. Uh -uh. Is your church building better than what I had to offer you? We have a great church. So that church is better than me. The one great church. I mean, they pray, oh, into a father's house. It's like it's the only house. It's never. Why is it never plural? We live in Florida. And around the world, you know how many churches have met on a Sunday morning before I even got dressed to go to, to my church? You know how many people are going to get dressed and go to church after I've come home from church? There's only one one church building that was a temple. And when you put yours as the one great church, you know, if you leave here and you you're gonna stand before God. Say it the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high, and behold who has created these things. Who's the creator? And this is the subject of Romans 1. God is. Man creates his own things, Romans 1. But he's not the creator, capital C. That bringeth out the host by number, stars. He calls them by name, stars, by the greatness of his might. By the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. God's got all the power. Texas don't have no, many places in Texas today has no power. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, this is God, now look at, after all this, Isaiah turns it, and speaketh, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed from, passed over from my God. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, 
that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not. God never gets tired. God never faints. Neither is weary. <laughs> I bet you had a ball with that one when Jesus fell asleep in the back of the ship. Job says, have you got eyes like a man, God? God, do you really understand what it is to be like a man? And God's like, nope, not yet. One day. Has God ever cried? Yeah, Jesus wept. But the almighty present God, Jehovah, he doesn't sleep. There listen, there are times when I go to bed and say, Good night, Lord. I know you don't sleep, but you know what I'm saying, Lord. Good night. Look at your statues. And, and I don't know. I haven't been in Catholic Church. Look at the statues. Are their eyes open or they're closed? I, I, I forget. My God never closes his eyes at all. My God's ears are always open. Even if it's no. There is no searching of his understanding. You're not going to understand all of God. Never, ever. Are you going to say, I got God figured out? Never. Even when we get the glory and the everlasting of the eternal life, God's going to... Oh. I don't know how many times I've been through this Bible. I know preachers have been through their Bible multiple more times than I have. Everybody, it's still alive. It's still something new. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. The weakest, God will make strong. Little is much when God is in it. God don't work with the pride. God don't deal with the proud. When you're like, Lord God, it's too much for me. I need help. That's where God steps in. <clears throat> Jesus said, take my yoke. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utter as well. You know why? Because they're counting up. Look at me. I'm strong. <laughs> Lift weights. That's like, Pfft. you big sack of flesh. Do you know what a stroke can do to some people? I learned a dear friend had multiple strokes before he died. My grandpa had strokes. There are mighty people in the world. Yeah. A little stroke. A little too. You know how many people die of diabetes? Just too much sugar. He was a sweet man. Yeah, too sweet. That's why he died. God never dies. You know, you can have insomnia and not sleep, and eventually you'll die. Insomnia can cause death. You will close your eyes. God never closes his eyes. There are times I have been, you know, I'm on a long drive, and I've had to pull over and just close my eyes. When I used to drive a tow truck. I, I find somewhere, just pull off the side of the road, and just take five, ten minutes. God never does that. And then you ever realize when you sleep, you, 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 have, you, you imagine what God does while you've been sleeping. And yet, if you are his child, you are saved. You have been adopted by God. He's there to wake you up in the morning. And do you speak to him? And he's kept everything functioning in the middle of the night for your body. And you you get angry because you got to get up because your bladder says you got to pee in the middle of the night. Do you speak to God when you go into the bathroom and going back and snuggling back in the bed? Do you speak to God? Do you thank God? We had one time my wife got up and she found someone in our house sitting down. We've been walking through the house. Did you thank God for protecting you? That woman walked in our bedrooms. We were sound asleep. You thank God, hey, that person could have done anything they wanted to. You didn't think, hey, I gotta get up and go bathroom. Hey, it's a Monday. That's not the attitude to have. 
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it, except for Mondays, I guess. But they that wait on the Lord. Oh, I have a problem with that one. I, I'm impatient. I got a prayer right now. I'm impatient. I don't think God's told me no, and I'm not sure if he's told me yes. Shall renew their strength. You want to renew his strength? God. They shall mount up as wings, as eagles. They shall run. That's funny because he says mount up as wings of an eagle. Eagles don't run. They fly. Isn't that weird? <laughs> We're going to give you big eagle's wings and you're going to run. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> because he knows men can't fly. Now I'm going to make you mighty as an eagle, but you're going to run. Forget about flying. And not be weary. And what he says is you're going to keep pace with the Lord if you just wait on the Lord. Don't outrun the Lord and don't lag from the Lord. Don't go too far ahead and don't stay too far. Walk with the Lord. But walk with the Lord enough so you can follow him. Oh, you know, me and the Lord, we walk side by side. And he could make a turn on you and you wouldn't know it. Walk a little behind him. And they shall walk and not faint. That's a hard one because there, there are times in my life right now I want to go home. I'm tired of this world. But when I wake up the next morning, no matter what I feel, it's like, Lord, okay, I'm alive. What can I do for you? What can I do today to please you? I don't plan on going anywhere. I, I'll tell them, I said, Lord, I, I don't, I'm not planning on going anywhere today. Do you want me to type some things on the internet that people don't like? You want me to read a particular passage in the Bible? Do you want me to make outline? And Lord, you know, hey Lord, you know, I got, I got to go somewhere today. I, this is where we're going to go. Lord, you remind me to get a gospel track out. Leave a gospel track behind. Lord, I'm getting up for you. And Lord, I'm tired. I'm lonely. I'm gonna get frustrated. You, you know me, Lord. Forgive me the strength, and He gives you the strength. He keeps you going. And remember, all that in the body of Jesus Christ, 100% man, 100% God, he felt the same way we do. And there are a bunch of people out there who think they're better than God. And they're <clears throat> Christians, too. And they're the world. When you look at money, it's got a face on it, yep. But it can't talk to you. When was the last time you held money? You're going to buy something stupid. When the president, don't do it. No, no, no. That's not, that's not your money. Your money don't do it. And yeah, it's got faces. It's got eyes. It's got ears. It's got mouths. Ain't got no body. <laughs> They're all cut off at the neck. You got beheaded men on your money. Think about that. And yet, oh, how highly they're valued. 